All right, all right. Hello, everybody, and welcome. It's Chris Johnstone here. Thank you for being a couple of minutes early to all y'all that are here. We're just going to kick things off, make sure we don't have any technical issues here, and then get right into the content and get you going on generating more mortgage deals in your business from online marketing. So give me just a second here. And we will turn on our webcam. There we go. Awesome. That's looking a little bit dark in the background, but that's okay. We won't have this on the whole time. I just wanted to say hello and welcome everybody as you join the call. So hello, hello, and welcome. So if you can hear my voice and you can hear the audio, if it sounds all right, let me know by typing a, uh, a yes into the chat panel um, or the Q&A panel. So there's two places where we can interact with each other. Uh, just type yes in there. Dan, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Brian, thank you so much. Jerome, thank you so much. Uh, Kenneth, Kenneth, what is up, man? Great to see you on here. Hope all is well. Lourdes, all systems go. That is amazing. Okay. Um, Deandra, thank you so much. And uh, let me know where you're all from, all are from. So um, we did a, uh, a four-week training course. Oh, Tucson. Awesome. Uh, California, Mark, I am jealous. We are, uh, <laughs> I am here in the great white north. Um, we're not in California. Oh, sweet. Miami. That's awesome. I just got back from, uh, from Florida. I was out at Carl White's um, uh, Freedom Club event uh, out that way. And man, it is so nice to step off the plane and feel that heat. Oh, it's so good. So uh, we're based out of Canada. And, um, and uh, so we've got a half a foot of snow that fell, uh, that fell this week. Oh, so you, NorCal, where the weather is a, li a little bit chillier. That's cool. Right on. Um, I love NorCal. It's uh, Mount Shasta is, was a, uh, a phenomenal uh, place. We kind of toured all over uh, that part of California. Oh, Rima from Vancouver. What is up? Um, hope all is well. Saul, what is up, man? Long time no see. Uh, hope all is well and that your son is doing well. Um, uh, hope you guys are crushing it right now. That's fantastic. Um, but uh, on the Vancouver train, I'm actually headed to Vancouver tomorrow. I'm hopping on a plane to uh, head down and do some consulting work in Vancouver for one of the large uh, uh, mortgage brands here in Canada. So um, we'll have some some great takeaways. I'll be sharing those on the Facebook page. So um, if you're not, uh, you know, following me on uh, on Facebook or on Instagram. Uh, head on over. I'm trying to do, you know, at, at least one helpful tip or piece of content every day or a couple of days. Uh, so there's lots of value for you over there. Just head on to Facebook and, you know, search for Chris Johnstone and like the business page. And then on Instagram, hello, Ronnie. Great to have you here. Uh, on Instagram, it's underscore Chris Johnstone underscore. Uh, I thought it looked cool. Plus Chris Johnstone was already taken. So <laughs> late to the party on that one. All right. So we have got um, everything looking good. I'm going to share my desktop and we are going to take this screen full sized. How are we doing here? Okay. All right. So you should now be able to see the mortgage concierge and, uh, and uh, a picture of me looking all awkward in front of a desk there and uh, at the subhead of closing more deals from online marketing. If you can see that, um, holler at me again in the chat panel, just type yes in there. Let me know that everything, uh, that everything looks okay. And uh, for some reason that hid the chat panel on me when we did that. So let's find that. We are good. Awesome. Okay, Ronnie, Deandra, Bo. Uh, perfect. Looks good. Looks good. Awesome. Okay, great. Thank you all uh, for being here. And I've got some exceptional training for you. So we have really made a, a pretty big breakthrough in the company. So I'm uh, the president of Connection Incorporated, which is weird 
to say like I'm the president of something, but that's like what they put on the documents or whatever. So that's um, what I say. But well, I mean, we're we're a real business. We have 15 full time staff and all of the the wonderful things that come along that. Uh, so we've come a long way. Some of you have known me for. I mean, Saul, man, we we go back at least probably what seven eight years. Um, uh, it's got to be clear. And so I've been at digital marketing in the mortgage world for uh, this is coming up on our 15th year. And uh, yeah, that is correct. Saul. So that's that's crazy. And it's been an evolution. So when I originally got into the business, it was because my dad is in the mortgage business. And and that led to me getting really good at Google marketing. I've always been a nerd. Um, then I became a marketing nerd when I realized how amazing marketing was. And then I became a digital marketing nerd when I really discovered the power of Google AdWords. Um, so when we first got started in the business, I was doing the rate sheets and donuts thing, trying to get realtors to send me business because I just joined my dad in the mortgage business. That sucked. It was horrible. <laughs> I don't recommend doing that uh, at all. Um, Definitely, you know, having coffee appointments booked and then attending those, that's great. But like going to the real estate office with your box of donuts and your coffee, not a good way to approach the business. So um, uh, we found a better way. So we started running ads on Google to generate real estate leads. We would then take those real estate leads, sell them to the realtors for a discount and return for the mortgage business that they would send us. And that's originally how I got started in the business. And there's had been an evolution from there. So after we really figured out that paid traffic strategy, we figured out organic traffic. So how to get a mortgage company ranked on the front page of Google in the local marketplace so that you show up on the map and then how to do proper database marketing so that your database would leave you five star reviews on your Google profile so that you would get more phone calls from the front page of Google. We call that local Google traffic. It's still uh, a, a product that we offer to our clients. Um, we have uh, five of the, the largest cities in America. We have a mortgage lender on the front page of Google getting phone calls, um, which is super cool. That's a great accomplishment. Uh, we also have you know, across major cities in Canada as well. Um, so that was an evolution and then Facebook was born. So we've been doing this for before Facebook existed, um, but Facebook and Instagram have come along and they are a tremendous source of leads. So we've got Google, we've got organic, uh, we've branched into YouTube marketing. So we're able to go into each of these marketplaces and we know how to target the traffic in the marketplace write ads that get a mortgage consumer to respond. And the ads aren't that difficult. I, I have templates here for you in the presentation. You can literally swipe our Facebook ads, swipe our Google ads. I went through all the data, picked out the top two performing ads uh, that we have running on Google and the top performing ad that we have running in Florida right now on Facebook. Uh, they're in the presentation that you get to take away today. So uh, fast forward to where we are today. So we run a marketing agency specific for mortgage lenders and mortgage brokers, and we drive traffic and leads. So it's been an evolution. And for a very, very long time, all we would do is we would generate the leads for the mortgage professional. We would give them to them and we would say, here are your leads. Like they, they come in in real time, all this wonderful stuff, but we would do the traffic and we would do the opt-in pages, but then the traffic was up to them. So Obviously, most of the leads that come from the internet are not good, right? So we made this discovery that most of our clients would get kind of like tired of following up on the leads and they would either stop doing it or they would do it sporadically. Certainly nobody was doing it the same way every single time. So we produced some training packages. We did a four week training course, then we expanded it to be a seven week training course. Um, and then we put it into a monthly membership and we're like, okay, you can get on the phone with us once a week and we will teach you how to convert these leads. Still, everybody ended up doing all kinds of different things. And there was really no formal way for us to be like, okay, we gave you this many leads. How many appointments did you get? How many apps did you take? How many deals did you find? It was incredibly opaque for us to try and get that data from our customers. So that led to us partnering with Carl White, my, uh, my good friend, my business partner, Carl White. We developed a piece of software and it's called Connect My Leads. And it's a, it's a lead follow-up system. It's pretty simple. It sends ringless voicemails, text messages, and emails 
two new leads that come in. So that the whole problem we were trying to solve there was like, let's send the exact same follow-up to every lead every single time so that we can get a reliable, consistent result. So that when somebody comes to us for lead gen, we can say, okay, take the leads, plug them into this system, and you'll get X result of number of people that you can talk to on the back end. Worked out great. Turns out that stat is hovering right now around 40%. So if you take leads, you put them into the system and it comes pre-programmed with like, okay, this, you know, this voicemail goes out right away. This text message goes out after five minutes. This email goes out after 10 minutes. And it literally plans out like the 90 days of follow-up that you need to convert that lead. On average, 40% of the leads will reply back. Half of them will be like, no thanks, not interested. I didn't fill out the form. Who is this? Whatever. It doesn't matter because as soon as anybody replies to the software, it takes them out. So you don't have to cold call. You don't have to chase. You don't have to get rejected by any of those leads. We know they're bad leads. So they just kind of like self-select out of the system. And of that 40%, the other half, the 20% that are actually interested, that's where you're getting your communication flow from. So that's solved a massive problem in the industry. And then <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm not going to use names in the presentation, but we had a client that, that had a lead that came in at like 9.15 in the morning. Our automation system went out on that lead and they got a text message at like 9.20. And it was like, hey, I would like to speak to somebody about a mortgage application this afternoon at two o'clock. So that message comes into the system um, and Mark, uh, Mark is asking questions says, is your automation system MLO shift or different? Um, it's different. So we, what we did was we, uh, acquired a piece of like CRM foundation, I guess you could call it and then built what we wanted on top of that structure. So it's just for mortgage lenders. It's called connect my leads. Um, and uh, it's connect my leads. Uh, this, the, the link to the software is connectmyleads.com. Uh, but like, don't go there right now. Trust me, stay here. What I'm going to give you in this hour long presentation, um, you're, you're going to want all of that before you even think about software or anything like that. So, um, and, and any questions that anybody has about this stuff, just type them into the chat panel and we'll do a full Q&A at the end. Uh, Zoom does this amazing thing where you can actually put up your hand and I can unmute your microphone and we can have a conversation. Um, I'm going to stick around for as long as I possibly can after the webinar and just like, let's hang out. I'll answer your questions and, and do all that good stuff. Um, but anyways, back to the story. So, um, so this lead is like, I want to submit a mortgage application this afternoon at two o'clock. Well, that mortgage lender was being a mortgage lender that day and actually like working in the business. So like working with their underwriters, taking a realtor out to lunch, actually like the regular stuff in the business. So he didn't see it. He didn't see the message, not his fault. Totally like, Hey, I get like, look, I'm, I'm slammed with notifications right now. I don't see them all, right? And it's the same with our client. So anyways, two o'clock in the afternoon comes and goes. He's not even aware that this person has requested the appointment at two o'clock. And all of a sudden his, you know, private messages on Facebook start blowing up because this guy's on his business page. Like, hey, I've asked for an appointment at two o'clock, submit my mortgage application. I'm angry, yada, yada, yada. So the client calls us, says, hey, I need to stop this program. I can't handle this influx right now. I'm already too busy in my business. I said, look, um, we have bandwidth on our side of things. We had just onboarded like four new people in our sales department and two of them just book appointments. Like they're, they're, their whole job, there's actually a whole professional industry just around booking appointments. Like there are, there are people that spend their entire careers. They're not salespeople. They're appointment bookers and they're, they have like conferences and stuff that are just like, okay, how do you book an appointment and qualify a lead? They're phenomenal at just doing that. So we have two of those people on staff. So I said, look, rather than you being an appointment booker, I'm just going to, for the next 30 days, get one of my appointment bookers to work your leads for you so that you don't have to worry about it. We'll get access to your calendar. When we book an appointment, we'll put it on your calendar and then we'll call you and confirm that appointment so that you're never going to miss anything. He said, all right, cool. I'll stay on the program. So they're like, sweet. That's awesome. The next 30 days blew my freaking mind. Okay. Our appointment concierge setter booked 30 
out of the 100 leads that came in that month. A 30% lead to appointment ratio. And my whole perspective on what we'd been doing up until that point completely changed. And I had this aha moment and it was like, wait a minute, all of our customers are mortgage professionals, not appointment setting professionals. Why are we expecting mortgage professionals that are really good at taking a mortgage application to chase these people and book appointments? That's technically like you should pay somebody $20 an hour or whatever to do that job, not do it yourself. And it was this light bulb moment. In that moment, the mortgage concierge concept was born. And it's a five-step process of all the way from, okay, how do you target these people on the internet and write ads that are going to pre-frame them to be a better quality lead at the end of the process? Then how do you get them to opt in? How do you communicate with them automatically so that the bad leads scrub themselves out, the good ones get to the next step in the funnel? And then how do you maximize the number of appointments that you're getting from those people in as automated a process as possible without like hiring a call center or something like that. So that you actually talk to people on the other end that are happy to talk to you that want to submit a mortgage application. And that's what the mortgage concierge is. It's a five step process that we've figured out that is working exceptionally well. I'll show you the stats from the last 30 days of what we've done on the systems. So, and that's what we're going to learn today. That's why we're all here. Let's hop into it. And again, thank you for being here. My name is Chris Johnstone. I'm the president of Connection Incorporated. Let's get kicking. So um, this is a fundamental groundwork that we want to work from from this point forward in the presentation. And the goal of advertising is not to generate a lead. The goal of advertising is to generate a profit. And there's a big difference because you can generate a lot of leads. And we, if you've run lead generation for a realtor and you've promoted like open houses or stuff like that, you know, you can generate a ton of leads at like $5 a lead, $4 a lead, $3 a lead. But most of those leads aren't going to convert into deals. They're just like cherry pickers in the real estate market. The likelihood of, of the majority of those people buying a house is very, very low. So what we want to look at is, okay, how many leads do we generate? How many appointments are booked? How much profit did we make from that system? So I want you to kind of put that lens on everything that we're talking about here today. Now, in addition to that, I want you to think about what's happening in our world right now. So uh, those of you that are familiar, throw up the digital hand. And, uh, and uh, if you're familiar with Quicken Loans tool, Rocket Mortgage, right? If you know what that tool is, just type yes into the comments below. Um, I'm going to hit you with some interesting statistics here. So way back in 2016, um, Quicken Loans said they funded $7 billion in closed loans through Rocket Mortgage. Now, um, any <laughs> amount that starts with a B is still pretty significant. But when you look at the overall picture of the mortgage market in the United States, it's really not that big of a number, especially considering that's just over 7% of Quicken Loans total closed volume in 2016. Now, uh, Rocket Mortgage came out and said 80% of the users that use that tool were first time home buyers. For those of you that don't know, um, cause uh, Bo says yes, Mike says yes, Dan says Matt, yes, Kenneth says yes, Pat says yes, Ronnie says yes. Um, but for those of you that don't know what Rocket Mortgage is, it's basically like an online application tool where people think that they can get a 100% like, yes, you can get a mortgage by filling out this online tool, um, which may or may not be true, but we'll just, um, no comment on that, right? But it's a tool where people can go online, punch in a bunch of information and get a mortgage quote back but for the lack of like 30,000 foot view. So Suman, that's what that is. So can anybody take a guess as to how much of Quicken Loans total volume Rocket Mortgage takes into account in 2019. Keeping in mind, it was 7% of their total loan volume in 2016. So uh, Timothy's got a guess in here. So Ronnie's saying 13%. Armand is saying 53%. Vinny says 23%. 
Sumon says 50, Lourdes says 40, Saul says 30, Pat Finch says 25. We've got someone very optimistic up here. Timothy says 75%. Kenneth says over 50%. Ooh, Scott Selden with the 66%. That's a very precise <laughs> estimate, Scott. I love it. It is in 2019, and again, this information coming uh, directly from Quicken, 60 Six percent. Scott nails it right on the head. Uh, 2019 was the best um, in the 34-year-old uh, company's history. And in May, Quicken Loans had the highest closed loan volume for home purchases in the company's history. More than two-thirds of those people using Rocket Mortgage, Quicken Loans' ubiquitous, fully online mortgage process. Three quarters of those home shoppers are buying their first home. So think about that growth because, and, and, and not to speak disparagingly, but this company having this tool is amazing and it's awesome, but this is more an indicator of the customer than it is necessarily the technology. Our clients and the clients that you're going to deal with from this point forward in your career are demanding digital tools to start the process, to start the mortgage process. So the key to hitting your income goal is online lead generation with offline conversion. So what we're seeing is these online tools are incredibly popular, but when we take them and we deploy them in a local marketplace and we give an option to somebody who's looking to speak to a local lender who can give them phenomenal service, we find that the response rate is fantastic. Now, you need to actually get the appointment with those people. You need to talk to them. It's not just about generating those leads, but when you can talk to those same people, give them a better level and more personalized level of service, you win in that equation. Our customers are already online. They've already decided they're already gone. They're there. This is the choice that we're just making here today is whether you want to go play in that pool and whether you want to go get that business or not. I can tell you if you have lofty ambition for your goal in 2020, this is the pathway that you need in order to hit that lofty goal. Huge caveat here. Y'all know um, I get to spend some wonderful time with the Freedom Club, which is Carl White's personal mastermind, uh, which is an incredible group of people that achieve incredible things in their mortgage businesses. There is a process to how this works. You need to focus on your past customer database first. If you're happy with where you've got that, awesome. You move to the next, which is referral marketing. If you have got that dialed in, that's, that's great. Then you move to online advertising, okay? If you don't like referral marketing, that's okay. Jump directly to online advertising. But please, market to your database first. It's the low-hanging fruit. Online lead gen is just how you scale after that, right? So normally, um, when, I, when I do this, people will come to me and be like, okay, well, driving traffic from Facebook doesn't work because Facebook isn't growing as fast as it used to be. So I thought that this is uh, relevant. So Facebook is still growing and growing with the target demographic that we want. These are home buyers. These are people uh, that are baby boomer-esque. Um, also, uh, you know, the, the generation behind them. But in 2012, Facebook surpassed 1 billion users. And now they are over 2 billion, very quickly approaching 2.5 billion people on the platform as active users. Check this out. An active user are those who have logged into Facebook during the last 30 days. So these aren't just people that have Facebook profiles. These are people that are logging in at least once a month. Um, we know that the average user on Facebook logs in every day and their session length is getting longer and longer and longer. It's amazing. Facebook is still growing. Our customers are still there. Now, as you also know, Facebook owns Instagram. Check out Instagram's growth. In, July, in June of 2018, Instagram reached 1 billion monthly active users, right? Um, very quickly, that is going to eclipse into the 1.5 and then the 2 billion mark. Um, as it just continues to grow and grow. This is incredible, especially when you consider there's only seven, well, only, <laughs> but there's seven billion people on the planet. So like one out of seven people on the planet have Instagram. That's incredible. Even more have Facebook. 
Now, here's another shocking statistic. I won't pull you here on this one. I, I, I wanted to see your responses, but um, I also want to get through this so that we can get you the content. Um, the average North American spends four hours a day looking at their phone. Four hours a day, actively engaged, screen on, unlocked, working their phone. And, you know, we've all got the, the iPhone update if you're an iPhone user that shows you like your screen time breakdown as far as like how much time you spend. And I'm guessing that your little social media bar is a pretty significant amount of your total. You're normal. That is roughly, uh, you know, what they're seeing is roughly half of the time that people are spending on their mobile devices is done on some type of social network, be it Facebook Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, whatever it is. So our customers are glued to their phones and on social media in a big way. They, I'm not telling you anything that you don't know, but I think that it's important that we're going into 2020 and these are, our trends are not decreasing. There's a lot of people out there that are trying to put that out there. It's just getting stronger. Now, one thing that is dying is email marketing. Okay. The average open rate on an email is 17.92%. In the financial services industry, it's actually lower than that. What that means is that if you send out an email blast to your entire customer database, roughly 18% of those people will open it. Uh, if you're doing better than that, congratulations. Um, I've seen clients that are getting 30%, 35% open rates on their past customer database. That's awesome. That means you've got a great relationship with those people continue to send them marketing and messages to generate referral business for you. Now, here's the other shocking statistic to that. The average click-through rate, 2.69%. So that means of the 18% of the people that open your message, only 2.69% of those people will actually click. So I have a lot of people that we do consultations with. So we give these free strategy calls away where we have uh, team members that are trained just to on like how to um, build a mortgage business that's profitable and they have all the steps and then they custom tailor it to whoever they're on the phone with. And so we have a lot of people that come to us and they're like, I get these leads from the internet. I email them out my application link and nobody fills out the online application. Yep. That is correct because only 18% of the people will open the email and only 3% of them will click. And those 3% that do click will look at a long form long application on their phone, even if it's a tiny form. Um, and they're not going to fill it out. You have to make it easy for them. You have to get them on the phone and so that they just have to talk rather than actually trying to type out that entire thing. Now, same thing applies to ringless voicemail. Now, ringless voicemail does work better than email, but only 33% of people listen to voicemail from business contacts and only 18% of people listen to voicemails from, um, from numbers that they don't know. Now, check out text messaging. Research shows that SMS open rates are as high as 98% compared to just 20% of all email. And on average, it takes somebody 90 seconds to respond to a text message and 90 minutes to reply to an email. So when you're following up with the online leads that you're getting from Facebook and Instagram and Google and YouTube, having a text message that goes out to those people in the first 10 minutes is critical, like absolutely critical. Now check this out. Our software that Carl and I developed together also sends Facebook messenger messages. So if you're getting leads from Facebook, it can put them into an autoresponder and send them back Facebook messenger messages. Um, open rates on Facebook messenger messages are 98% right now. And the click through rate is 12 times higher than email. So if you want a response from your online leads, you have to look at an omni-channel approach. And all that means is that you're using more than one communication path so that your consumer can choose the communication path that's best for them. Some people like to talk on the phone. They will reply back to the ringless voicemail. Most of your customers prefer to text, so they will respond to the text message. And then some of them, the, the lowest part of them, uh, like of the number, will respond to the email. Oftentimes when we get on the phone with a mortgage professional, it's like, how are you following up with your leads? It's like, I send them an email right away and then I'll call them if I have time, maybe I'll send a text message. That's backwards. That's what most people in our industry are doing right now. And it's putting the worst conversion method 
first and then maybe doing the other two. It's got to be reversed. You got to send the, the ringless voicemail first, text message second, email third, and you got to do it automatically all right up front. Okay. So a little takeaway for you there. These are the types of responses that we're seeing from the automatic follow-up system that we have on the back end. The ringless voicemail gets about 10%, text messages get about 20%, email gets about 10%, and direct messages on Messenger get about 20%. So if you look at that, if you're able to stack them all together, that's a 60% response rate on leads. So if you get 100 leads through your system, you're using this type of omni-channel communication, you can talk to 60 of those leads. Industry standard, from what we can tell from looking at the statistics on our clients, is that the average talks to about 15% of the leads that are actually generated through the system. This is a game changer. By changing nothing, your lead cost could stay the exact same, traffic source stays the exact same, nothing changes except you're just adding in new communication pathways. You can do better than double the conversion rate on the leads to deals just by automating your follow-up. It's amazing. Now, it's not just marketing that's gone digital. It's the entire way we need to communicate with our leads, our referral partners, and our clients. So it's not just advertising that goes out on Facebook and Instagram and Google and YouTube, you know, decimating the newspaper and bench signs and billboards and all that kind of stuff. It's not just marketing that's gone digital. It's the entire way that we communicate with our clients. You've got to be using text message. You have to update the way that you're communicating with your clients. And before we get into how to generate your leads online, I want you to have this framework for like, how are you going to turn those leads into money, right? So if you look at the stats from Zillow, Zillow, arguably one of the largest lead providers in the United States, their stats tell us buyers spend an average of 4.4 months shopping for a home to buy. That means that it takes an average of 4.4 months in order to convert a lead into an actual application and a deal right? So most people will get a lead, they'll work it for five or six days, and then they'll stop working it. If we actually look at the sales statistics behind the National Sales Association, 48% of salespeople never follow up with a prospect. <laughs> like, uh, sounds incredibly shocking, but think about this from the perspective of like going out and meeting with your realtors. If they're buying leads, oftentimes they'll say, hey, what do you do to follow up on your leads? You, once you get into that conversation, it's, it's normal that roughly half of the sales professionals don't follow up with the leads that they generate online. Totally normal because it's incredibly difficult to get rejected over the phone from more than half of the people that you talk to. It's just not like human nature to be like, oh, wow, that was awesome. Let's do that again, right? Like it gets tough over time if you're just generating leads from online. That's why automation and omni-channel is so important because look at the statistic down there at the bottom, 80% of sales are made on the fifth to the 12th content contact and only 10% of salespeople make more than three contacts. So the, the majority of the money in the leads that you generate from your online marketing are in the list and they're happening like four to five months out in the actual sales process and everybody's focused on trying to pick the golden fruit on the first seven days. Yeah, there's deals to be had there for sure. The majority of the money is actually in the list and the follow-up. So this is your massive shift to more money in your business. All your customer communication channels need to be digital and automated and you need a system for that. So this is what this looks like. I have this thing, it's called the franchise marketing blueprint. Um, it's, it's not available yet. <laughs> um, we, we may be releasing it in February. Um, but the, the whole premise of it is, um, I had a, I had a consulting deal that came in and they paid me. And basically uh, I sat down with, in this like super swanky boardroom, whatever, and all the guys in suits and everything in this mortgage company. And they were like, okay, Chris, if we sell you a franchise, what would you do to build that franchise? And when they asked me the question, I was like, man, that's wicked smart. That is a really good question. That's a great way to look at this. And so originally I sketched this out on like, they had one of those like, uh, like stand up whiteboard type things. And I, I mapped out the conversion pathways in the middle, which is basically the, 
the emails, the text messages and all that stuff. And I was like, okay, what are all the different ways that we can put leads into our mortgage business? And so you've got past customers, you've got realtor referrals, you've got leads from Zillow or Boomtown or Commission Inc or whatever it is, you can buy leads, right? You get new leads from listings. If you've got a realtor, you're promoting those listings, those leads are coming in. You've got your old leads database, right? Maybe you buy another mortgage business or whatever, you've got old customers in there. You've got retargeting and advertising, your SEO, your Facebook and Instagram, your Google and your YouTube, radio, TV, podcasts. Um, all kinds of other stuff came out of this meeting. These are kind of like the, the most takeaway ones for you here in the presentation, but every single one of those pathways needs a slightly different way to follow up with that person, right? Because a referral from a realtor needs to get a different follow-up than a new lead that's come in from your Google account, right? So when you look at these conversion pathways, you can say, okay, what I'm going to do with this specific part of my business, I'm going to automate this. So every lead that comes in on this specific channel, these are the messages that I'm going to send them. You program it once you're done, right? It just continues to book appointments for you and work in the background so that you're getting the most amount of deals from that specific source in your business. And you just do one at a time and you just go around the wheel and you just chunk these systems in. This could take you a year or longer, but once it's done, it's done. Every new lead, you just tag them with the appropriate tag and voila, the rest of all of the hard work and the heavy lifting is done for you. So the reason I share that with you here today is so that in a couple of months when I release that, you're going to opt in and become a lead. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's, um, we probably will never release the actual like blueprint that we wrote out about all the different pathways or whatever. Um, the reason why I'm sharing that with you today is to help you to realize that there's so much opportunity for you in your business, but none of it will generate any revenue for you unless you take the time to put a system and a process in place so that you walk away from it when it's done and you go, okay, I got that. I know that whatever the source of the lead is, has a pathway mapped all the way to I book an appointment and I talk to somebody on the phone. You have to figure out from point A to point B what that is. Automate the whole process, then move to the next part of your business. So what we have for you here today is obviously at the end, there's going to be a pitch and I'm going to tell you that, hey, if you want leads from Facebook and Instagram and Google and YouTube and you want everything done for you all the way to, hey, a booked appointment in your calendar, we will do that for you. But I don't want you to think that this is just a catch-all of just like, okay, all my lead gen is taken care of, that can actually be the starting point for a journey for you to use that CRM to plug in all of these different profitable pathways in your business and really get your business to the point where you have a purchase pathway for every customer that comes in, right? So up at the very top of your sales funnel, right? You've got traffic and lead generation. And that can be Facebook and Instagram, Google or YouTube, or it can be Kijiji or it can be Craigslist or like whatever. Like you can drive traffic from a whole bunch of sources. We've tried all of them. Facebook and Instagram and Google and YouTube are the top four when it comes to online lead gen hands down, right? So let's focus on that. Once those leads are generated, they move one step further down in the funnel, which is your automatic follow-up system. So that's the ringless voicemails, text messages, and the emails. Those are all being sent through Connect My Leads or whatever CRM program that you have. Just make sure that your CRM program has ringless voicemail and text message, and you can sequence out those communications, right? Obviously, I'm biased to, our, to yours, but, or ours, but you can use whichever one you want. Now, underneath that, when people reply to that automatic follow-up, or you see a lead that's very high quality in your system, you have manual follow-up. You have a way to identify, hey, that's a really good quality lead. We're going to call that person. We're going to follow up on that person. Or when somebody gets a text message and they reply back at 9.15 saying, I want to submit a mortgage application at two o'clock, somebody's there. They get that and they say, oh, I'm sorry, two o'clock this afternoon isn't available can I book you in at 11 or whatever it is, right? But there has to be a manual person in there. And it, let's be real, it can't be you. You're the one running the mortgage business and, and making sure that that all happens. You, you're the rainmaker, 
and then hopefully you have somebody that's there to help process on the back end for you. You shouldn't be manually following up on leads. You know, you're out with a realtor and you get a text. It's like, oh, hold on. I got to book this appointment with this lead. Just hold on for a second, right? You can't do that, right? You've got to have a system in place for that. Number four is qualification and presentation. That's normally where you or a, a loan assistant gets on the phone with this person. They qualify like, hey, you said that you're making X amount of dollars per year. Is that accurate? Job letters, pay stubs, all that good stuff. Like you got to qualify the lead. Then you actually do the pre-qualification, turn them into a closed sale. Now, again, that's where most mortgage professionals stop with their lead process, right? We take it even further than that. And we bolt a reverse triangle onto the bottom of it. We're like, we're super advanced here, right? So you take this person all the way through the conversion funnel to the bottom point where you get the money, right? You close the deal, you get the transaction. Everybody's like, woohoo, throw them in the database. We're done. On to the next one, right? Like, let's go convert the next lead. Those are the most profitable asset that you have in your business. Once you fund a deal from somebody and you get the first paycheck, every paycheck that you get from this point forward, when you close a deal, I want you to times that number by five. Okay. Every time you get a commission, you know, the average number that gets thrown around the mortgage industry is like 2,500 bucks for a transaction. Earlier the, this morning, the team and I, we were talking to somebody in California, his average is eight grand, right? We talked to somebody yesterday in uh, uh, Utah and his was uh, 1250, right? So it's all over the map. Take your number, Whatever that is, the average loan amount that you get per deal, every time you see that number, I want you to times it by five because that should be over the lifetime of your relationship with that person. After they've done business with you, that should be how many deals you do with that person from referrals and repeat business, okay? And there's a system to making that happen, right? So the first phase that you want to put these people into is immediate referrals to friends and family. So as soon as they close the deal, you start the communication pathway of we are in the business of referrals. If you know anybody that's looking to buy, sell, or refinance, we want to give them a free consultation so that they can know what's happening in the marketplace right now and make a good decision. Here's how you refer us business. Teach them, train them that you are in the business of referrals and how to send that referral to you, right? We have a, a follow-up sequence inside Connect My Leads that helps you to do that. Then you need to get a five-star online review from that person on Google because the next person that Google's mortgage lender in your marketplace is going to read that review and call you over a competitor because they read the rating and review. So again, that's going to help bring more deals from that deal that you've already transacted. We have a follow-up sequence inside the software that you get access to that helps you get those five-star online reviews. Then Leia, the last part is the lifetime customer journey. And that is calling your database once a quarter using a ringless voicemail, right? So it's automated. It takes you 15 minutes to read the script, program it in, send it out to all your past clients. Once a month, you should have a piece of mail that you send them. Yep. Mail, like in the mail, mail, like a piece of physical thing that they can get. Chances are their dentist might send them something and nobody else, right? You want to be unique, top of mind in there is just like something that bonds you with them. Doesn't have to be super fancy. Postcards work great, but if you know anybody looking to buy, sell, or refinance, please pass their information along. We're happy to get on a call with them and give them a free consultation, right? Create that lifetime customer journey for your clients so that after they do business with you, that pathway is automated so that you don't have to think about it. And every new client that you close in your business, you know, over time, you're going to get the next deal and the next deal and the next deal. And you actually get lifetime value from that. So, uh, we're going to pause here for just a second, and then I'm going to show you the Facebook ads, the Google ads, um, the targeting, talk to you about this really cool thing that we discovered on Google here and get you some more valuable content. But I just want to make sure we don't have too many questions coming in here. So, um, so Mark says, do they really add together 10 plus 20 plus et cetera? Um, so Mark, when you're, when you're looking at the statistics after the system has run, it does actually kind of look like that. So, uh, like, when we're in the software on the back end, like you don't get to see it on the front end, but on the back end, we can see, okay, how many replies came from text messages? How many replies came from emails? How many replies were direct phone calls back to our customers' phone numbers? Um, and it does, it breaks down like that, like 10% of were emails, 20% were text messages. And we can actually see the, the usage patterns uh, 
and compared to the number of messages that were sent out. So we actually do get the stats like that. Yeah. Um, uh, so another question here, do you work with Google ads or the emails, text and voicemails all customized for specific lead types? So yes, we work with Google ads, uh, YouTube ads, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, if for the program that we're going to talk about here today, which is the mortgage concierge, we do it all for you. So we run all the ads on all four networks. Uh, we use your brand, um, to drive all the traffic, but we're on the hook for the ad spend. So we're literally spending the money on the ads using our algorithm. I'll talk to you about why that's so important, uh, at the end here. Uh, but we drive all the traffic. We generate all the conversions. So we're in charge of the landing pages, the surveys, uh, all the conversion. And then we program uh, the follow-up system that you have access to. So you can log into the CRM. You can see all the leads. You can see all the follow-up, all that good stuff. It's all in there for you, but we're managing it all. And then our concierge team is actually calling the leads that we generate for you to book you appointments. So what you're getting is, is booked appointments at the end, uh, but we're, we're selling packages of leads that we're working to turn into those appointments for you. So hope that answered your question, kind of like ruined the, the big reveal at the end, but uh, no, but that's what it is. So Jason says, um, oh, this is a great question. So, um, so I won't give away the location, Jason, but he's saying that he has clients that speak uh, two languages. So it could be Spanish and English or French and English, uh, whatever it is. We have a ton of that in like the, the California market and, um, and all that stuff. Um, I can choose to market to only one language, but then I'm not marketing to as many leads as I could. Uh, does your software address that? So the software doesn't really address that. It's not like you, you can see what language somebody is speaking on the, on the other end of the computer, but what it can do is it can say, okay, this is a French ad. Uh, just for example's sake, uh, it's going to go to a French landing page and then we're going to put it into a French funnel. So all of the, the automations on the back end of that are going to be French. We have Spanish funnels that we're doing right now in California that are just targeting Spanish speakers with Spanish ads, with Spanish landing pages and Spanish follow-up. The client wrote it all based on our templates, but in Spanish, um, crushes it. Cry, like compared to like a, a, a hyper... Um, a competitive marketplace going after those leads. Very few people are doing that. So he's got, he's got a funnel that's crushing it. So that's uh, what you would have to do that uh, there. Uh, Craig is saying, is this presentation going to be sent out to us? Uh, yeah. As long as we don't have any technical issues, uh, we got a red flash and light there all looks good. So yeah, we'll send this out. Uh, but we do take everything down after a week. So we'll put it up. It might be available for like five days. Um, but then we take it down because um, people jack our stuff. So, um, so we'll leave it up for, you know, we, for our customers, we leave it up for, uh, for five days or I shouldn't say customers, like for our people, like you're, you're, you're in, you're in our crew. If you're watching this, you're one of us, you'll get the presentation. Um, uh, Deandra says, I'm just getting started. I don't have a database. How can this help me out? Um, new leads is, uh, is how it would help you out. Um, and, and we can talk about that at the end. Um, so how will you divide the leads for two agents from the same location, say both live in Brampton? Uh, Suman, great question. So what we do is we drive the leads through your business page. So the, the ads that we're running for you will generate specific leads that are just for you. So they're all exclusive to you. They've been driven through your business page to your landing page, to your funnel, to your CRM. Uh, they're all exclusive to you. And then we could be running ads for somebody in the same marketplace, but a different person will be targeted with that ad. They'll click it and they'll go down the other pathway. So the leads are exclusive to you. Um, and and we're, we're cognizant. We know roughly how much traffic we can drive in each marketplace. And, um, and, and we're big on like our Google program. We only take two clients per market on our Google program because SEO just can't do three customers. So where it's like, that's why you don't hear me talk about the SEO program a whole lot because it's sold out in a lot of the larger marketplaces. So it's like, sorry, I can't help you to a lot of the people that come to us with money and that's, that's not good for anybody. So, um, so that's the way that we look at that. And if, you know, lead volume is ever a problem, we just won't take more customers in that marketplace. And we already kind of know what our lead uh, amounts are going to be. So let's get down to it and get you generating some leads, right? So this is the foundation of online marketing. There's only three steps. 
It's actually pretty easy when you look at it from a fundamental standpoint. So we have interested prospects and Google and YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, they already do all the heavy lifting to identify who those people are. So when you're out on the internet and you're searching on websites or whatever, and then you go back to a search engine like Google, or you go back to Facebook to check, you know, whatever, um, they look at where you've been on the internet before that. And yeah, there's cookie blockers and stuff like that, but like the vast majority of people don't use that stuff so they can see where they've been. So if somebody's on the internet and they've never looked at realtor.com or they haven't looked at realtor.com in a year, and then all of a sudden they go check out realtor.com three days in a row, and then they go on bankrate.com or they go check a, check a rate website or whatever, and then they go back and they repeat that behavior a couple of times, these algorithms are smart enough to be like, okay, hey, we've seen that people that visit those websites come through and buy homes and get mortgages because they see the conversion on the other side of things. Like, hey, this person is now on a pathway to get a mortgage. You can show them ads. So they do all the heavy lifting of be like, hey, that person over there, they're looking for mortgage information. You should show an ad to them. All you do is you go in and you just say, hey, I want people that are interested in buying a mortgage or getting a refinance or a reverse mortgage. There's all kinds of cool ways that you can target those people. The point is that you have interested prospects right now, today, looking for a mortgage application and they're surfing around on Google, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. You have to show ads to those people. Now, here's a big tip that made a big change for us in the agency when we started doing it this way. We used to look at it from how do we generate as many leads as possible? Because obviously everybody on the internet is like, hey, we generate leads at $3 a piece, whatever. And our leads were like $15 a piece, right? Because we were writing copy for the mortgage consumer. And in many cases, we were showing it to people that were interested in real estate. And so that used to be very frustrating for us. But then I said, hold on, let's just get absurd with this. Let's go the complete other direction and let's write an ad that would be so repulsive to somebody that's not interested in getting a mortgage. Like let's make it so bland and so boring and so mortgagey that only somebody that would be interested in a mortgage could potentially click on that advertisement. Like let's repel everybody, but an awesome mortgage customer. And we started writing ads like very blunt, are you getting a mortgage in the next 120 days? Question mark. This quick quiz will let you know how much you qualify for and what your monthly payment will be. We're going to call you after you fill out the survey to get you the information that you're looking for. Well, nobody in there that is not interested in a mortgage is going to click on that advertisement. Well, that's actually a great thing. So our lead cost actually went down after we trained the algorithm on who those people were. And the people that click that ad and actually go through the conversion funnel are much better quality. Now on Facebook and Instagram, you get a lot of really low credit people, people that just don't fit for a mortgage. They've got to go get credit repair and all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's no real way to vet all of those people out of the system, but they deserve a chance too, right? So to help somebody out with a little bit of help on credit repair to get the good leads that happen after that, it's worth it, right? So, what you're doing is you're writing very specific ads to those people and then you're sending them to a survey and that survey is going to qualify that person. So you got surveys, chatbots, lead pages, phone calls, buying leads, whatever it is. So you target them with the right ad, you write the right ad, they go through the conversion process. I'm going to show you a survey here of like an actual survey that we're running that's converting over 15% of the traffic into leads. I'm going to show you every step in the process here. Um, but before that, you've got to understand that when you convert a lead, you've got to follow up and actually book the appointment through automated text messages, emails, ringless voicemails, and messenger messages where applicable. And that's how you get quality applications. Three steps in the process. If your funnel isn't working, it's one of these three things that's broken. So uh, we went through um, all of the ad accounts that we had uh, last month under management. And we discovered that this ad is our most popular um, advertisement. It's in Florida and it says many Florida residents don't know they're qualified home buyers. Our quick mortgage pre-approval tool will let you know how much home you can afford and at what rate. Boy, talk about a repulsive advertisement to somebody who's not interested in buying a home, right? Like whew, they're gone. They've already scrolled by that. But to somebody who's actually interested in buying a home, that's a phenomenal advertisement. Get started by answering some simple questions. And then we have the link 
to the survey. And then right there in the advertisement, it says borrowers must have a minimum credit score of 550 to qualify. I would shy away from putting that in your particular ad copy. If you're here watching the presentation, um, I would leave that out. You don't want to, um, with Facebook and Instagram right now, you don't, you want to let everybody through, right? Don't be exclusive like that, but it tends to be working really well in this particular marketplace. And that's how the, that's how the ads worked out. So you can take that copy and um, launch it on your own. And Bo, uh, we will have somebody from the team reach out to you. Uh, we're happy to, uh, to work with you. So uh, this is a screenshot of our Facebook account. Uh, this one here, we've got $2,540.79 invested. Uh, average cost per lead, $9.96, but it's 255 leads coming in on that copy that's designed to like push uh, the majority of the traffic away. And again, that generates us a better quality lead that comes through the funnel. Here's another one here. Um, this one here has $11.26 per lead, 79 leads through uh, in just the last 60 days. That's current as of today. Um, so Facebook's still a fantastic lead generator and those ads will work for you. Now, uh, the next thing I want to show you is our Google advertisements. So this is for a funnel that is crushing it on Google AdWords right now. And I want to share with you uh, something really cool that we've discovered on Google. So this is the ad copy. It says first time home buyer. Uh, on the right-hand side, Toronto mortgage requirements, explore your options, discover your options as first time home buyer in Toronto, take our free assessment, find out what you can qualify for. Uh, you can probably guess who we're targeting with that advertisement. It's a first time home buyer, right? So on the left-hand side, we have our standard lead gen, find out what you qualify for, brand new qualification tool, use our mortgage deal finder tool now, to find out how much home you can afford mortgage options tailored to your needs. Now, the cool thing about that is they can just call the phone number right on the advertisement and become a lead. But these leads, check this out, conversion rate, 15.53% at scale. So this campaign has $2,000 spent in it uh, just since August 21st, right, to November 18th. So again, current. Um, we have 357 leads coming from Google. This is not Facebook and Instagram. This is Google. And uh, the interaction rate is out of this world, 8.35%. Now, the big hook that we're doing here is we're mixing real estate traffic and mortgage traffic inside the same campaign and using that to train the algorithm. So even though somebody might go to Google and type in a real estate-based keyword, like how to buy a home in Tampa uh, or homes for sale in Tampa, we're showing them a mortgage advertisement. So they're, they're very good leads to get pre-qualified and move through the system, but uh, also highly responsive to the offer, but we don't have to compete in the mortgage world. Now we still compete in the mortgage world, but this helps, helps drop our costs down. So those are the ads on Facebook and Google. This is the exact process that we drive these leads through. So uh, the offer is for a mortgage pre-approval. Right? And this is our mortgage pre-approval tool. Find out how much home you can afford and what rate you can expect to pay. Uh, some of the surveys say, and what your monthly payment will look like. Depends on the marketplace and the compliance department that we're working with. So it says, do you currently rent or own? They select one of those options and then they click next. The reason why we're pitching them this softball question up front is because we've watched tens of thousands of leads come through this process and we know that if we can get somebody to answer the third question in the process, our, our, the amount of people that fill out the form in the back end goes up dramatically. So all we do is we ask them three super easy questions up front, and then we get to the hard questions about their credit and that sort of stuff. So um, you've got you've to get them three steps into the process before you start that more inquisitive process. So that, that's the first question. Second question is, when are you planning to request your home loan? Again, super easy question within 30 days, 30 to 60, 60 to 90. And again, we're seeing these answers on the other end when the lead comes in. So we can tell whether we've got a, like a, a high intent lead that we need to call, call right away or somebody that we can have on the back burner, right? Then we ask, how much would you like to borrow? And we give them a really wide range, like 200 to 400,000, uh, 406, 600 to eight. So again, a third super simple, easy question. Then question number four really starts to get into the nitty gritty. Like what is your combined gross annual income before tax? 
and uh, for you and your co-borrower. After that, how much have you saved or received as a gift for a down payment? Which again, is another qualifying question uh, that we're asking these people. Sorry, just one second. Our next, what's your estimated credit score? Again, detailed question, but just asking for a range so that on our side, we can tell what type of lead we're working with and then are you currently working with a realtor? After that, we ask them for their first name, their email address, and their cell phone number. And that is a lead. So when that lead gets generated, boom, you get an email, we can set it up so that you get a text message. But what it does is you get all the information so that you can tell what that lead looks like and then it automatically goes into the follow-up system. So somebody is on Google or Facebook, right? They see that ad, they go, yeah, I'm shopping. I wanna know how much home I qualify for. They fill out that form and two minutes after that, they get a voicemail with you in your voice. Hey, it's Chris Johnstone calling. You've submitted our mortgage quiz and uh, I have the responses here and uh, I have the answer to your questions. So um, I'll shoot you a text message here in a couple of minutes so that you can find a time that works for you. And I'm really looking forward to getting you the information that you requested. Talk soon, right? Super simple voicemail. Eight minutes after that, so 10 minutes after the lead has been generated, they get a text message with all your contact information and then an email that follows up 10 minutes after that. So think about your average mortgage consumer or your, your average real estate consumer who's filled out a couple of other online forms because they're in market, right? They're interested, they're ready to start doing something and look at the statistics that we talked about earlier in the presentation. Like almost 50% of salespeople never get back to their lead. They fill out yours and it's like, hey, you asked me for something, I've got it. How do I get it to you? Let's do this thing. You convert those hot leads right away, but then remember, it's all about the drip. And what we do is over time, we drip these people based on where they came in on the survey and the answers that they've given us, we then put them through a drip process so that in four months, five months, six months, you're still converting appointments. You're still converting deals from the leads that you generated up front. So speaking of conversion, in the last 30 days on our mortgage concierge program, we generated 687 leads and we booked 100 and 85 appointments in the last 30 days for mortgage professionals. So those are 185 people that are like, hello, I would like to submit a mortgage application see, and see if I can qualify for a mortgage. Uh, statistically speaking, we figure about 80% of those people are first time home buyers or people that are coming into the marketplace. So here's what we've learned here today. The digital market mortgage marketing process. Remember the growth that we saw at the beginning of what uh, you know Rocket Mortgage is doing. This is where your customers are going and this is how you're gonna scale the growth of your mortgage company. Targeting and omni-channel advertising. So that means not just advertising on Facebook and not just advertising on Google, but advertising on Facebook, Instagram, Google, and YouTube, and then retargeting those people. If you have somebody that clicks on a Facebook ad, but that doesn't convert, they should start seeing your ads on Google, right? If somebody clicks on a Google ad, goes to your survey, doesn't fill it out, you need to retarget them on Facebook so that you can get them because they're in market. They're expressing behavior on this stuff. So I'm going to target them. And one thing that's, that's really important here with our concierge service is that We've run over a million dollars in paid advertising through our advertising account specific to the mortgage industry. So think about all of that form data. Well, when we generate a lead, we send that back to our Facebook pixel and our Facebook pixel learns what a good mortgage lead is. So our advertising account can go head to head with another mortgage professional or another large mortgage company that doesn't have as much data as we do and we're able to go into a marketplace, they're struggling through all the bad credit, credit repair, lower dollar volume leads. We're able to turn our campaigns on within 30 days. We're advertising to a completely different demographic on Facebook and Instagram and Google than they are because they don't have the data that we have, right? Our algorithm is able to just put us into a totally different traffic pool, which generates a better response, right? Which is why you see such a high appointment rate coming from the leads that we're generating internally um, rather than leads that somebody's trying to do on their own, right? So we get the power of collective data. 
then we retarget those people and continue to follow up with them using retargeting until they become a lead. Quality lead creation is all about writing the right ad copy that attracts the right person and then putting them through a survey process so that they actually have to jump through hoops before they can actually get on the phone with you. Lead scrubbing and nurturing. Of those leads that you saw, uh, we have scrubbed out almost 20% of the leads. So we generated way more leads than that. But by the time we got rid of Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, the wrong phone number, the wrong email, people that were uncontactable, we don't charge our customers for those leads. We, we scrub them right out because they're fake, right? So we scrub those out so that we're only actually following up on real people that have requested the offer. It changes the numbers dramatically because we're not dealing with fake leads. So we scrub all those leads out for you and then we book appointments. And the way that we do that is by using our software, pre-programming it with your ringless voicemails and all those wonderful things. So it's your custom follow-up on those people that's 100% compliant. But when somebody replies back or we see a nice hot lead that comes through your system, we pick up the phone, we call them, we book the appointment for you. So this process of the mortgage concierge takes you all the way from targeting, ad copy, generating the lead, following up the lead and booking the appointment. We do everything for you. Um, it's all taken care of. So you can go to conciergemortgagedeals.com to get access to this program. And what you're getting is verified exclusive mortgage leads. So we make sure that every lead has good contact information we generate them through your social profiles on Facebook and your account on Google so that these leads are exclusive to you. They go into a CRM that we set up for you. There's no charge for the CRM. It's normally $147 a month. We give the software to you for free. So we use your branding to put the leads into your CRM. Now that CRM you have full access to. So inside there's 11 pre-built conversion campaigns like we talked about at the beginning of the presentation. There's one designed to get you more deals from your database with the, the quarterly ringless voicemail. That's already pre-programmed in there, ready to go. All you have to do is record your voicemails. We have a refinance campaign that's working exceptionally well for past customers right now. We've got um, a follow-up for your Facebook leads, follow-up for your YouTube leads. We even have a module in there to help you help your realtors follow up on their leads. So if you have a realtor that's buying Zillow leads or whatever it is, you can help them work those leads because we have a conversion process that's set up just for leads that come from those sources. So I don't want to spend too much time on that, but you get that for free. That's like a bonus for getting verified leads that are exclusive to you. And there's no contract to sign. So this is a monthly recurring program that you can cancel at any time. So you can head on over to conciergemortgagedeals.com. Now, right now, for those of you that are on the webinar today, the price for these leads is $20 a piece. And I'm taking a huge risk on my side because we have people here from, uh, from Australia. We have people here from Canada. We have people here from the United States. That means California. That means Idaho. That means Tanzania. Like we don't know what marketplace we're going into. I'm so confident in the data that I have inside our advertising account when we turn our leads on, we're gonna be somewhere close to that $20 mark to generate those leads for you. You get access to that pricing and we will hold your pricing for you if you come in at $20 a lead. Now, the way that this works is you're buying a pack of 100 leads for the month. There's a very specific reason behind that number. And it's, I believe that I need 100 leads to be able to give you enough appointments that you're going to be able to take the applications that show you that the deal is worth it because there's no contract, right? So at the end of that first 100 leads, you're, you have the option as to, okay, yeah, I want to go on the monthly program and I'm going to get 100 leads next month, right? And then we bill you every 30 days. But for the first round of leads, the first 100 leads, it takes us about 14 days to get this thing set up. And then it takes us about 30 days to generate those first 100 leads for you. And you can buy 200 leads or 300 leads if you want. We pack them into that 30 days. Um, but we recommend starting with at least 100. Now, because that's a 45-day window, there's no recurring billing. It's like you buy this program today. We're going to generate 100 leads for you. After that, you're going to get on the phone with your account representative and 
discuss the quality of the leads and how the program has worked for you. And then at that point, you decide whether you want to continue on on the monthly. If you do, we're locking in your price at $20 per lead, unless it's something like outrageous on our lead cost and we're like losing money every month, whatever, right? Uh, which I don't think is going to be uh, a problem, but we'll put that out there. If, if we're spending $25 to generate your $20 lead, we'll take you into the advertising accounts. We'll show you, be like, hey man, we need you to, to pay a little bit more for the leads that we're generating for you. But upfront for the first hundred leads, all the risk is on me um, because you're taking a risk as well. You're buying a hundred leads from the internet. They're, they're not the greatest quality leads. They're not as good as a referral. They're not as good as a repeat customer from Facebook, but this is scalable and it can be exceptionally profitable to do it this way. So um, January 1st, the price for the mortgage concierge is going to $30 a lead that there's no exceptions hands down. It's just like, if, if, if you come in after January the 1st, it's $30 a lead. So uh, you're saving a thousand dollars a month per 100 leads by investing today. And we realize that December is coming and everybody's expecting to, you know, shut down and spend time with family for a week or two weeks. So what we're asking is that you invest today and we will build your system, get everything approved, get you your compliance package before the holidays so that you can get it submitted and all that wonderful stuff. So that when January one rolls around, we can turn your account on all the Christmas ad spend is over. So the, you know, all that, it filters out of the ad network and we have a nice strong start January 1st. There may be some of you here on the presentation that don't celebrate Christmas and we just run the program just like normal for you. Okay. So concierge mortgage deals.com. It's $2,000 today. That's a hundred verified leads. And then we work those leads to turn them into appointments. It's completely normal on our system right now, even with all of the people that we have on the beta, for us to convert 20% to 25% of these leads into appointments. Even if you're doing your own lead gen and you're spending half of the offer here. So if you're generating leads at $10 a piece and you're working those leads yourself to book the appointments, it's worth it for you to pay $20 a lead, have somebody else do the work for you because we're gonna double the amount of appointments that you get. So you get the same thing without having to do the cold calling, the chasing of the leads and all those sorts of things. The other massive benefit to this is that you don't have to hire a staff member. I've literally staffed out four full-time people that are just dedicated to turning these into appointments and deals for you. And what would it cost to hire somebody full-time in your office to just focus on targeting ad copy, lead generation, uh, landing page, split testing, split testing the CRM, split testing the messages, programming the messages into the CRM, doing the follow-up, looking at the leads, vetting the leads, scrubbing the leads, calling the leads, booking the leads. It's, I've made this an irresistible offer. <laughs> okay. Um, if Saul's got a great question from 20 leads, how many deals should be a good estimate? So if we, so for the hundred leads, let's say you book 20 appointments, say we get you a 20% appointment rate. Um, it's likely that, um, so when we book you an appointment, we also send that person a show up sequence. So they book an appointment and then we start sending them text messages like, Hey, don't forget tomorrow is your appointment. Or if, if the appointment's the same day, that message doesn't get sent. And it's just like one hour before the appointment is, hey, don't forget you have an appointment today, uh, this date, this time, right? Um, so that show up rate will probably get you out of the 20 appointments that we book. You'll probably get about 15 people on the phone. Out of those 15 people on the phone, half of them are not going to qualify for a mortgage, okay? So you can take seven out of the 15 and just scrub them out. You're going to have to send them to a credit repair company or, or at least give them some type of advice on, hey, you need to save now payment or you need to go talk to this person about that. Um, if we talk to those people through the concierge service, we're going to do our best to make sure that they don't come through the funnel. But some of these appointments are just booking into your calendar automatically through the software and we don't get the chance to vet those people. So so they come through the funnel. So let's say you've got 20 booked appointments, 15 of those people show up, seven of them are no good. So you're left with seven people that actually have intent to buy a home and will qualify for a mortgage. 
after all is said and done with, you know, the one guy's got his brother-in-law who just got his loan officer license and, and this and that, you're going to end up with like three to four deals at the end of the day. And they're not going to close in 30 days. You're going to, you're going to qualify those people. You're going to refer them out to realtors. Those realtors got to go find them a house. And then, you know, with 60, 90, 120 days later, you're going to start funding those deals. So it's wildly profitable. If you look at just $2,000 in to bring, let's say three, maybe four deals out the back end and wildly profitable, but you're going to have to spend that initial $2,000 on the first bulk of hundred leads in January, right? Then you're going to have to reinvest in February, another $2,000, most likely before you've closed a deal, right? There, there's not going to be money in your bank from that. So at that point, you've got a database, right? And you can see, hey, I've got these people pre-qualified, they're out, they're shopping, they're looking, that's great, I'm gonna get those deals back. And then in month number three, that's when you start to see the return. That's the month where you cut the check, but you're also making money back from the system and then it kind of snowballs from there. But you have to understand, this is not, a, this is not like you put $5 into a slot machine and money might come out right away. It, it won't. It takes 60 days for this to, it's, this is a mature business marketing system. We're all professionals here. We understand that it takes time and it takes an investment. You got to, you got to spend money on advertising in order to grow your business. So hopefully that helps. Uh, another great question. How do you target by zip codes, miles, counties, etc.? And so uh, we can be as specific as a, uh, as a zip code. We like to be broader. So uh, it, we like to be statewide uh, because that allows us to throw the broadest nets so that we can get the, higher, the highest quality person through the funnel, but we can be as specific as a, as a city. Um, Facebook only allows us to be within 15 miles of a specific location. So if you have like a downtown core that you're going after, we can drop a pin and it's within 15 miles of that pin, but we can't be any more specific than that. All the traffic that we generate from Google, we can still target on Google by zip code. Uh, we prefer to, again, look at a statewide campaign, but we'll work with you to customize it to make sure that you're getting what you need through, uh, through the system. Um, okay, so Jason says, what are the stats on people answering the phone once the appointment has been scheduled? So that, that number for us right now sits around 75%. When we first started, it was around 50%. And that's why we put that, that text follow-up, like, hey, you have an appointment uh, sequence in place on all the leads, and that bumped it up to, to 75%. Um, so yeah, the, so the follow through and people actually getting on the appointment has, uh, has gotten much better. And it's about 75% of the people that book an appointment will actually show up. Um, and again, the appointment setters are good at that. Like they actually, um, so they are compensated on appointments that show up. So they're not just trying to book appointments with everybody. What they're trying to do is, is get intent from somebody and then hype it up a little bit. Like, okay, um, he's busy but he's going to meet with you at two o'clock. He's a phenomenal mortgage professional, uh, but make sure that you show up organized for the call. The questions that you want to ask him, he's not going to have a whole lot of time. Make sure that you show up prepared for the call, right? So they're, they're, they're working on like pre-selling you before the actual appointment happens. Uh, so Scott says, are these leads appointments? So the 100 leads are just leads. So they come into the system. You can see them in the CRM and you can see like name, phone number, uh, cell phone number, all the answers to all of the questions. If it's Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck or Santa Claus or whatever, we just delete that lead right out of the system um, and you don't pay for it. So it's verified leads, 100 verified leads. Each lead is $20. So the program is $2,000, right? Then we work the appointments for you. You should see somewhere in the range of 20 or more booked appointments from that 100 leads. So it's $20 a lead. Um, and obviously you can do the math on that. So, uh, concierge mortgage deals.com concierge mortgage deals.com. Sorry for the weird name. Uh, but it really did line up with what we were doing. Like they're called concierge agents. You're literally getting an agent that works for you in your business. So concierge mortgage deals.com. We would love to have you on there. Um, Dan says, can we preload three months out today? Yes, Dan, absolutely. Uh, we have other people that have already done that. Um, you know, we had one branch manager that kind of locked up five, uh, five areas that he wanted to, uh, to work with all at, all at once. So, um, uh, so we understand that that need is out there and uh, we're, we're doing our best to, uh, to help with that. 
Um, Scott says, what's the conversion rate from applications to closed loans? Um, so once you take an application from somebody and they actually like submit the mortgage application and they have good enough credit to get qualified, your closing ratio should be the same as what it is on, on, on a referral or somebody else. Once they've gotten to that point with you, the, the, the likelihood of them rate shopping you or going somewhere else is actually pretty low. So that we find that the conversion rate from the application to the closed loan is the same as like a regular deal that comes through your business. Um, uh, so the total conversion from leads to deals, uh, we're, we're seeing like 3% to 4%. So if you get a hundred leads, you should see three to four deals that come out the back end of it's like, just skip all the math in the middle. It's just like a hundred leads. You should be see somewhere in the range of like three to four closed transactions. Keeping in mind, that's not going to happen in 30 days, right? Like you're going to get one deal that closes in, in 60 to 90 days and you're going to get another one at 120 days. And it's going to like your, your return on investment balloons up over time. Um, kind of like compound interest, but, uh, I was going to say cooler, but I don't know. Compound interest is pretty sweet. So um, it's uh, like a compound lead conversion, we'll call it that, which is pretty sweet. Um, so Dan says, when do you give up on the lead? Uh, as long as you are on the program, we're working your leads for you. So, um, so we believe um, and know to be true that at the five month mark, a lead is quite possibly just as good as it was on the day that it was submitted. So I do a lot of training internally with our team on stats and data and, and stuff like that. And we know uh, you've got to work the lead. You, you just have to continue to work those leads um, because if they're actually serious and they haven't opted out, just a friendly touch in really sets your business apart from the competition as far as professionalism and all that wonderful stuff. So uh, we don't stop following up as long as you're on the program. Uh, we'll still convert your leads that were generated on the first day um, as long as they're still in the system. So um, so that's great. Lourdes says, so you integrate with an existing CRM or you have a CRM. So we have a CRM. It's called Connect My Leads. All the leads go in there. If you want to export them out to another CRM that you have, that's totally cool. It's got all the functionality to be able to do that. But we keep it in ours because that's the system that we use to convert the leads. Um, and it's got this pipeline tracker on it. So you can actually see, okay, I got this many leads that came into my pipeline. Here's how many have replied. Here's how many apps I've taken. Here's how many deals I've closed. And on the contact record, you can actually punch in the commission that you made from the deal and it will show you a return on investment based on the, uh, based on the flow that's actually come through the thing. So we use our software to track all that. Uh, hardly any of our clients actually use it. Uh, even though we, we continually ask them to. Um, but it allows us to track our conversion of lead came in. Here's how many people replied and here's how many appointments we booked. And then that's what we're talking to you on your, on your monthly calls with your account manager. Um, so Saul says, I'm in the Washington DC Metro. Can we target the tri-state area? Yeah, absolutely. So you just let us know uh, what you want as far as targeting. And then we customize the program to generate leads for there. Uh, Ronnie says, do you have a system where I can drive co-branded leads with a realtor? So Ronnie, as long as you're, you're able to get us the compliance approval to be able to do that, absolutely. We have a lot of funnels that we run on the, on the agency side of the business where we have um, mortgage and realtors that work together on all their open houses and their listings. And we promote the open houses and the listings, generate leads, and then the two of them work the leads together. Um, when we initially launched that system, we had to do a lot of work with the compliance department in order to get that approved, but they did. Um, and as long as, as you're happy to go through the compliance process in order to get it done, yes, we know how to do it and we're actively doing it. Uh, we know how to generate those leads. Um, so Jason says, can you target more? For example, if I want to handle only refinance and debt consolidation clients, can you do this? Um, if I want people who have bad credit and are self-employed, can you do this? as well. So uh, that's a great question. And on this program, no, we can't. Um, the reason why is because our algorithm is wicked smart on finding people that want to buy a home that need a mortgage. Um, as soon as you tie up into or try to tap into a different type of customer, algorithm goes wacky, doesn't know what to do. So this mortgage concierge program is for mortgage buyers. These are, these are people that want a mortgage that, that are buying a home. If you want uh, so we have funnels for refinance, VA, 
um, homes for heroes. We've got reverse mortgage campaign funnels, but all of those are done for you systems where our team of experts will manage your Facebook advertising account and implement our proven system in your business for you. Um, Jason, if you'd like, I can have a member of our team reach out to you and kind of walk you through what that looks like, show you some case studies and that sort of stuff. Um, uh, if you'd like, just uh, just type yes with your email address below. Um, and you can send that privately to the admin in the chat. Ashley, if you can make sure that Jason gets a call, that would be awesome. Um, Cheryl asked, do you talk to them about what documents to provide, i.e. income docs specific to their type of employment, et cetera? No. So Cheryl, our experts don't know anything about mortgages. They, they know how to book an appointment and handle an objection to an appointment or handle an objection to... Uh, to talking to a professional, but they don't know anything about mortgages. That's very specific. I don't do any mortgage training. And if somebody asks a question about it, my answer is very specific. You're not a mortgage professional. Don't answer a mortgage question. All you do is say, that is a phenomenal question. And I'm going to book you with the person that has the answers for you. Cheryl's amazing. And she's going to make sure that she gets everything taken care of on the call. But I need you to show up prepared. Does two o'clock work for you? Right, so they will not answer mortgage specific questions. They're trained not to answer any mortgage specific questions. Um, that's, that's up to you. And again, if you wanna put a junior person on the phone to kind of vet those people before you talk to them, that's totally cool, but they're just there to, to book the appointment. Now, if somebody says, I, d I don't have a job and you know, that sort of thing, they have those criteria to be like, okay, great. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to steer you over to this, um, this information about credit repair, because that's going to be the best option for you right now. And they won't book the appointment and waste your time with it. Um, but you will get low quality leads that book appointments where you get on the phone with them and you're like, what was that? That was crazy. There's no way that person's going to buy a house that that happens it, it, that we can't stop those people from getting through the funnel, but it's well outweighed with the other people where you get on the phone, and you go, Oh, wow, cool. Internet marketing actually works. This is amazing. So there, there is going to be that flux when you join the program. So I hope that helps. Um, so Fred has a great question here. Actually, I should, um, I should probably, since we're in the Q and a, let's flip the slide to the Q and a slide. Um, and thank you for being here. I realize um, you're all incredibly busy. We're coming up on, on an hour and a half. I hope that you really found value in the content today. Um, it's my absolute pleasure to put these presentations together for you. And for those of you that have already joined, welcome. I'm thrilled to be working with you. You've made a fantastic investment and we're going to take great care of you. Um, there's already emails being sent out to book your intake calls. Um, so welcome, welcome. And, um, and just book a time that's convenient for you. And, uh, and we'll take care of everything that we need to take care of over the phone. Uh, with you when you talk to your account manager there. And for those of you uh, that are ready to purchase, it's conciergemortgagedeals.com, conciergemortgagedeals.com. So Fred uh, asks a great question here. Curious, how do you measure in 30, 60, 90 day milestones uh, to measure KPIs to know that we're on the right path? So that's a great question. So uh, what we're doing on our side is we're looking at those KPIs inside your advertising account. So we, we pull reports on your Google account and we pull reports on the Facebook and Instagram account and we look at all of those. So we say, okay, uh, how much did we have to spend on advertising? What were all our advertising metrics? How much did we spend to acquire a lead? And where are the different pathways that are generating that lead? Are we tapping into the best quality traffic that we can? So over a 30, 60, 90 day, uh, we've got all our traffic metrics. Now, those leads that are generated, we then take a look at those metrics on 30, 60, 90 day milestones. So we say, how many leads did we generate? How many replied back to us? How many appointments did we book? Then we're asking you to get on the phone with one of our account managers every 30 days so that you can fill in the rest of those statistics for us. So uh, and most of our clients just email us every day where it's like, Hey, I just had an appointment with so-and-so and here's what happened. And then we track that on the back end. So they just like, every time they do an appointment, they just shoot us a message with what happened in the appointment and the account manager notes it on the file. So, uh, we track that over the 30, 60, 90 days so that we know, okay, here's how many leads, here's how many replies. Here's how many appointments, here's how many showed, and here's how many applications were taken, and then eventually how many deals were funded. So all of that is tracked, and we keep those milestones inside your software. So when you look at the dashboard of your software, and here I'll show you just a, a quick snapshot of that. 
oh, it's not in this presentation, but it look it, like the funnel that I showed you at the beginning of the presentation, it looks like that, but each stage in the deal conversion process is on there. So when you log into your dashboard, you can see here's the total number of leads you generated. Here's how many replies we got. Here's how many appointments were booked. Like you, you can literally see it on the funnel. Um, and, uh, and so that really helps. And then you can toggle that to 30, 60, 90 days. Um, and if you ever want custom reporting, just ask your account manager. They'll go back and, and pull the stats for you that you need um, on the program, uh, which is helpful. Great question. Um, the next question here is, do you have a program that targets FHA? So hold on. And a wonky thing going on here. Now I've done it. I've put the slide presentation on one window and the Q&A panel on the other window. Hold on here. Here, we'll just keep it like this. Obviously, you can see the, the presentation there. We're, uh, we're at the end of it. You're done taking all your screenshots anyway, so we're all good. So um, do you have a product targeting like FHA? So we do, but again, that's a done for you funnel, not this particular product. If you'd like information on that, just uh, leave, a, leave a message below with your email address. We'll reach out and we'll set up a call with you and we'll walk you through what that looks like. Uh, so Fred says, at what stage are we suggesting the leads are at later stage or in awareness, um, maybe you can say the goal instead of knowing for sure. So the goal is to get people as close to the end of the buying process as possible, but they're in the research phase. So um, they're past awareness. They know that they want a mortgage because they're, they're, they're clicking on an ad that says, this is the start of a mortgage application. So we know that they're, they're, they're researching mortgage options at that point, and we just want to get them that option. Many of these leads, like I said, are first-time home buyers, and they're great referrals for realtors. You get them pre-qualified, you send them over to a realtor, um, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for that. So that's kind of where we're getting them. Of course, you get the odd lead that pops in that's like, hey, I, I bought a house, I saw your ad, I need to go right now, but that's an anomaly, it's not normal. Um, like you don't get those every month, right? They're, they're just kind of like the icing on the cake when they happen, so hopefully that helps. Fred, Jason says, does your team analyze the market prior to selecting a target marketing channel mix based on locale, i.e. whether Facebook, Google is best to achieve out of the $20 lead output? So Jason, we don't analyze previous, but what we do is we analyze as we progress. So our goal, and this is, um, you know, I, I can be open with us here because this is us, this is our crew. Our goal is to drive you as much traffic as we possibly can through Google because they're, they're closer to the end of the purchase cycle and they're better leads. But Google traffic is incredibly expensive and they give you a quality score as an advertiser. This is, I don't want to get too deep down the, the rabbit hole here, but it's important to understand so that most of you will see how this process kind of works out. So what we do is we turn the Facebook ads on first. We drive a bunch of traffic to the landing page just to make sure that, that it's converting properly and that we achieve a specific opt-in metric, right? So we want more than 10% of the people that land on that page to actually opt in. The reason why that's so important is because Google looks at how many clicks you get to a landing page and how many people opt in to assign you a quality score pretty early on in the process. And that puts you in a bucket of how much money you have to spend per click. So if you're a really high quality advertiser on Google, you can buy traffic for less than somebody that has a bad quality score or a, or a low converting landing page. So we drive Facebook traffic first to the landing page just to make sure that our conversion rates are good. We have the Google Pixel installed on there so it can see, oh, hey, look, traffic's going to this page. People are opting in. People like it. This is a good advertiser. Then we turn the Google traffic on. They're able to verify, yes, Google traffic is also converting on this page. Thumbs up to the advertiser. And then we're able to get better quality traffic at less cost. So we're looking at that process while at the same time, how many leads can we get from the Google funnel? And then we supplement with Facebook and Instagram. The leads that come through Google are better quality. They, that's, that's how it is. So they cost more, right? But we're, we're comfortable spending more on the traffic 
and supplementing it with Facebook and Instagram on the back end, because again, it's just about return on investment, right? As long as we keep our margin where we want it to be, we'll spend all the way up to that dollar amount because we know that you're going to close a deal from a lead that came through the Google part of the funnel faster than you're going to convert a Facebook one, which is going to keep you as a customer. So you're happy. It's literally designed to create as best we can a win, win, win situation for everybody. The consumer wins because they get to work with you. You win because you get a great return on investment and we win because we get to keep a customer and that continues to grow our business. So that's all we're trying to do is create a win, win, win situation for everybody involved. Um, and that's why we're trying to, to push as much of the traffic to that Google network as possible once we can. Um, Dan says, so to be clear, 100 leads, you'll get 20 appointments. If that's true, what happens if we get 300 leads over the three months and only get 10 appointments? So um, if you're talking about 300 leads over three months and only getting 10 appointments, we'd figure that out in the first 30 days. Uh, when we get on the phone after the first round of 100 leads and you say, hey, look, I only got three people to talk to, like that, that would be a hard stop on our side. And it would be like, okay, well, something's broken. Let, let's fix this before we, before we move forward and actually taking a look at it. And, and we would know that well in front of, um, of the end of the 30 days as well. Cause we, we see the conversions to the appointments on our side of things. We don't have to ask our clients for that information anymore. So we keep a really good eye on that. So you don't end up in that situation. Um, Saul, awesome. Great to have your customer, man. Um, uh, thank you and welcome. Um, Jason, yes, someone from our team will, uh, will reach out shortly to uh, talk to you about that. Um, uh, Cheryl asked a great question and I never thought of that. So these are not in-person appointments, they're just over the phone. Uh, that is correct. These are all phone appointments. Um, if somebody wants to come to your office and you're cool with that, we'll book them uh, like that. But uh, right now we're just doing phone appointments. Uh, that's great. Um, so Suman, if you'd like a one-on-one -on -one consultation, unfortunately uh, for, for me to get on the phone in the next couple of weeks is super difficult, but I do have somebody that can answer your question. So Suman, if you leave your, um, uh, your cell phone number or your email address in the, in the chat box there, uh, we'll get on the phone with you and we'll discuss whatever you need um, to, get you, uh, to get you going. Pat Fitch. Oh, sorry to use your last name, man. Sorry. We're going on an hour and a half here. Uh, I always try and use uh, first names, but um, a pretty, a pretty uh, generalized question here. So uh, can we target loan size and leads and type jumbo conforming conventional reverse? So you can, but not with this system. Uh, so we do um, like specialized marketing systems where we can target a specific type of traffic for you, but these are just buyers. These are people that want to buy homes uh, in a specific marketplace that are looking for a mortgage. Um, so I hope that helps. Uh, Fred says, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is my return on investment. Uh, today in Zillow or this service has a timeline and conversion time date range. So I know you said it's 90 days ish. So I'm thinking it's in the three to nine month timeline, fair in your point of view and data insights. So three to four months is a, is a realistic conversion window for you. Um, but please, Fred, understand, like we literally have people that will, will, that will come to us and be like, I turned my system on on Monday. Um, I, like, I, have, I haven't written a loan application and it's been 48 hours. <laughs> like we'll get support requests like that. So it's, it, we, we try and be as like blunt as possible on these presentations. Like this is an investment in a business. It's when I have to play it up, I guess a little bit because I, like we don't want those types of customers in our business. We want business people that are, that are mature. So when I say 90 days, that's a realistic ex estimate, but you're all going to understand at the end of 30 days, what your pipeline looks like. We all, we all know what, what mortgage pipelines look like and you'll know whether you have deals in your pipeline or not. Um, and th that's enough for us to be able to get on the phone and say, okay, well, let's, let's move forward to the next, to the next round of leads or let's not um, and, and see whether it's working for you. So, sorry, kind of a, uh, kind of a weird answer there, but that's, uh, that's how it works. And again, depending on your marketplace and how much you're making um, on a, on a deal, that's going to, work your numbers as well. So what you can do is you can say, okay, look, for, for every hundred leads, I'm going to close three deals. That's a, that's a realistic ballpark number. Like some people a little bit more, some people a little bit less, but if you aim at that, it's a, it's a good goal. It's a good target. Now we don't know just because 
it's the internet and it's lead gen, like we don't know if that's going to be all in 90 days or 120 days or, you know, that third deal might come in a year uh, that gets you to that. So the timeline gets fuzzy, but the math on the conversion, not so much. We just know if we continue to follow up on those leads, continue to book the appointments, you're going to get those deals down the road. So you can look at it from that way, but more on like, okay, if, I, if I'm 500 leads in on this thing, here should be my return on investment. That's a good way to kind of do the math on it. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps. All right. Well, that is the end of all of the questions. I was going to do the funky thing. Oh my goodness. There's a whole other Q and a panel here. Um, okay. I'm going to fire through these real quick uh, for all y'all. So, um, so Vinny says, I was wondering what if they respond to the text email that they are interested with, they still selectively opt out. So Vinny, the answer to that question is yes. So anytime anybody responds back to a message that's been put in on the system, that it, it shuts off. That's why the concierge is so important because they get that message. There's, there's no continuing follow-up. So they're the one that picks up the conversation in real time. So I don't know if you noticed, but throughout the presentation, there was a couple of like pop-ups that came up on the top right-hand side of my computer. That's because I have the software open in a browser window in the background. And those are people that are, that are coming in through our version of the software. Uh, those desktop notifications show up for our concierge team and they immediately get into the conversation with that person. So yes, technically um, the system has stopped communicating with them, but that's because we do the hybrid approach and there's a person there to pick up the conversation right away. From anonymous attendee, ooh, <laughs> when you say a 60% contact rate, that's not correct based on your statements. If it's 60%, you're assuming that all clients who respond, they respond through all channels. Okay, an anonymous attendee is a jerk. Right on, dismiss. <laughs> it's math, man. Come on. <laughs> if you have 100 people and 60% reply, it's 60%. Anyways, how will the software adjust to the messenger changes coming January 15th, 2020? Armand, great question. So we have to have somebody that sends a direct message to your business page in order to be able to reply back to them. So um, they have to opt in just like all communication channels, right? Like if, if they're going to opt in, they have to opt in using Messenger so that we can send them back the messages. Um, everything runs through ManyChat. Um, so it's like it's full on board and totally compliant with all that good stuff. Um, another question, what does the trifecta mean? So the trifecta is a three-part communication sequence. So ringless voicemail, text message, and email. That's how we uh, communicate with most of the leads because most leads aren't coming through Facebook Messenger. So it's just ringless voicemail, text message, and email. Uh, that's the try. Uh, Marlene says, can we use the CRM for past clients as well? Yes, absolutely. So you get free access to the CRM and you can use that to communicate with your past customers. There's a phenomenal uh, flow in there to go up to the past customers. It's essentially one ringless voicemail, one text message, and one email, one day apart that goes out quarterly to your past customer database. Uh, we had a guy who had uh, 49 past customers. Uh, he put them through that sequence and he wrote five refinances um, from the system. Sorry, excuse me. So uh, works out really well. And yes, you can use it for past clients and referral sources as well. Um, so another question, 14 days to get set up and 30 days to deliver the 100 leads. That's 45 days. That is correct. Yes. Um, and then 20% to be converted to appointments. Yes. Uh, that's a, again, it's, a, it's not a guaranteed number at 20%, but our average right now in the system is much higher than that. So it's safe to say that we should be around the 20% mark. Cheryl, great to see you on the presentation, Cheryl. Hope you're doing well. Um, so this is, are you telling them what documents to bring to the appointments? Uh, so no, we don't tell them what documents, but what we have done for some clients is we've put together an email that automatically gets sent out when an appointment is booked and you can write out in that email, hey, I'm looking forward to meeting with you. Here's how to have the best experience. Have these documents ready for me. Um, and then that email goes out to them before the appointments so that they, they know what they need to do. We just can't have our concierge agent telling them that over the phone. Um, so Marlene, can we add other people to CRM? The answer is absolutely yes. You have full access to that CRM program, which is an exceptional deal. Um, and then the milestone question. Okay, perfect. 
Okay, great. So a lot of these are duplicates from, uh, from questions we've already answered. So that's great. Okay, awesome. Well, that is the end of the presentation. Um, I would love if you enjoyed today's presentation. I realize at the end, you know, there's a sales presentation, but if you found this valuable, uh, I'd love for you to go on the Facebook page and just say, Hey, I was just on the, the mortgage concierge webinar. The content was great. Um, I'm Chris Johnstone. Uh, Chris Johnstone on Facebook. If you go to the business page, that'd be great. On Instagram, it's underscore Chris Johnstone and then another underscore. Uh, we're uh, trying to do our best to put great content out there every day. Uh, Lourdes, thank you so much for the, uh, for the feedback. If you could post that on social media, that would be awesome. If not, that's cool too. Um, but that's awesome. And, um, and, and Jason, um, we will give you a shout. Don't worry. We'll take care of you. And, uh, we would love to have you on the program. So, uh, Ashley, if you could, uh, if you could have one of our team members reach out to Jason from the comments there, that would be awesome. And, uh, we're, uh, really looking forward to working with you again, Jason, that would be amazing. Um, so, uh, with that, uh, I do want to give a sincere thank you for being here. I know your time is the most precious and valuable asset that you have. Um, it externally, this is our last heavily promoted webinar before the end of the year. So we may not see each other um, until the new year. Obviously, if you connect with us on social channels, we'll, uh, we'll take you through the whole thing um, and, uh, and uh, take you along. We're going on a, my, myself and my family uh, are taking a little bit of a trip. So if you, uh, if you follow us on, uh, on social media, we'll take you along for the journey. But this will be essentially our final uh, sign off before the end of the year. So uh, if I don't get to see you or connect with you before the end of the year, thank you so much for everything. I hope you've had a phenomenal year. And this is, uh, this is really here to cue you up to have the best year ever next year. So um, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. I hope everybody has a fantastic December and, uh, and we will see you in January with more exceptional content and, uh, and an update on how uh, everybody that purchased here today on the Mortgage Concierge is doing in the new year. So again, my name is, uh, is Chris Johnstone. Lourdes, Vinny, I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. Kenneth, what is up, brother? Uh, Merry Christmas and, uh, and thank you. And I uh, hope everybody has a fantastic rest of the day. See you. Everybody, thanks, Fred. Okay, great. Awesome, Fred. We're looking forward to having you on the program. Uh, ConciergeMortgageDeals.com, and we'll, uh, we'll see you on the inside. All right. Bye, everybody.